always read and follow all of the information in the operating manual, especially the safety instructions. Reagent residues might still be present in the instrument. Standard cleaning should be done regularly. For example, when crystallizing media are used, the upper portion of the instrument must be removed to check whether crystals have formed. A complete standard cleaning must also be done before further disassembly for intensive cleaning. First, set the valve to recirculate and empty the instrument completely. To do this, use the hand wheels to position the piston in the fully down position. Attach the titrate onto a bottle with deionized water. Then fill and empty it completely several times. To rinse the titrating tube, set the valve to titrate. Then fill the instrument completely several times, emptying it each time into a suitable receptacle. Any carbonate crystals should be swabbed out with dilute acidic acid. Crystals from aqueous solutions can be swabbed out with water. Next, attach the titrate onto an empty bottle and empty the instrument completely. To do this, move the piston up and down several times at both valve settings. Screw the cap back on. Move the piston all the way up and then downward by a half rotation of the hand wheel. Unscrew the air vent cap and open the housing. Remove the mounting tool from the rear housing and use it to loosen the safety ring on the dispensing cartridge. Then, unscrew it completely by hand. Slide out the piston rod locking mechanism to the stop. Turn the hand wheels to raise the top part of the instrument and remove it. Remove any crystal deposits on the dispensing cylinder using water or dilute acidic acid and a soft bottle brush or a bent pipe cleaner. Then dry off using a laboratory wipe. Once the standard cleaning has been carried out in this way, the top part of the instrument can be reinstalled. Now the instrument can be further disassembled for intensive cleaning. Pull out the filling tube and the recirculation tube. Then set the valve to recirculate and pull the valve lever upward. Now the titrating tube can be removed as shown. Then pull the piston rod and attached piston out of the dispensing cylinder. Slide the light gray safety ring of the piston rod downwards, then unscrew the piston. Screw the clean piston onto the piston rod and tighten it securely. The teeth for the piston and the piston rod must be aligned. If necessary, the piston can be moved back by a maximum of one tooth. Then slide the safety ring upward again. Now line up the piston rod. The tooth rack of the piston rod must be arranged in the direction of the air vent opening of the valve block. Now insert the piston vertically into the cylinder and press it halfway in. Next, unscrew the filling valve with the mounting tool. And remove the sealing ring with a pair of curved forceps. Reinsert the clean seal. Then screw in the filling valve by hand 
and secure it by a quarter turn with the mounting tool. Slide the clean titrating tube in as shown. Now press firmly on the valve lever. Attach the top part of the instrument and turn it downward. Lift the safety ring and check that the nut and bolt mesh securely. Then screw in the safety ring tightly by hand and secure it by turning from the right to the left hand edge of the housing using the mounting tool. Press the piston rod locking mechanism in up to the stop. Then connect the rear housing at the top Snap it closed and screw in the air vent cap. Now mount the filling tube and recirculation tube. And then reattach the titrate to the bottle. After a function check, and possibly a calibration, the titrate is again ready for use.